Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's Free CompTIA A Plus Certification Training Course on Troubleshooting TCP IP Settings. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we'll look at the requirements for our CompTIA A Plus 22702. That's our Practical Application Exam, Section 3.1, where we need to troubleshoot client side connectivity issues using appropriate tools. And we need to understand TCP IP settings, what all of these things are, and some of the characteristics of TCP IP, including loopback addresses and automatic IP addressing. The TCP IP protocol uses an IP address. And here's a breakdown of this IP address format. You'll sometimes hear this referred to as Internet Protocol version 4 or IPv4. It's more common to hear the next version of IP called IPv6. IPv5 was completely skipped. So we went from 4 to 6. For those of you keeping track of OSI layers, something that's not entirely necessary to know for the CompTIA A plus exam, an IP address is a layer 3 address. But let's break apart a IP address and what it really makes up. So if we looked at an IP address of 192.168.1.131, it would look like that on the screen to us human beings. But behind the scenes, your computer is actually looking at it as a series of ones and zeros. And what I've done is convert these numbers to their binary equivalents. 192 is actually 11000000. The number 1 is 00000001. If you look at all of those together, you can see that each one of these numbers is made up of 8 bits. 8 bits is also 1 byte. And some people refer to that as 1 octet, because there are 8 digits that make up, or 8 pieces that make up that, that particular byte. So to call it an octet is even more specific. IP addresses, therefore, if you add up all of these ones and zeros, are 32 bits long, or they are 4 bytes long. And when you start looking at it that way, you can start to see how we're able to break apart all of these little pieces of the IP address to figure out where the networks are, where the hosts are on a network, and how many hosts you can put on a network, a series of complications that your network administrator has to have to be able to give you the right IP address so that you can communicate to other people across the network. If we were to configure the IP addressing information for your computer, let's say we were going to do this manually rather than the automatic method, we would need an IP address. We'd have to start with that, of course, so that we can uniquely identify your computer. We need something called a subnet mask. And this is used in a calculation along with the IP address so that your computer knows where on the network it happens to live. What subnet does it really belong to? And the last thing we would need to know is the gateway. We need to put in an IP address of a device that's on your network that sends the information or routes the information outside of your local network to the rest of the world. With those three things, I can at least communicate in and out of my local network. If I want to talk over the internet, I usually also have to have the IP address of my domain name servers, the DNS servers that are out on my network. What this does is convert those names that we normally use in our browser to IP addresses. Because your computer has no idea where www.google.com happens to be. So what your computer does behind the scenes when you type in google.com, your computer goes out to a DNS server and says, hey, I need to know how to get to google.com. Do you have any idea what the IP address is of that? And the DNS server responds back, goes, oh yes, to get to google.com, you go to this IP address. And from that point forward, your computer goes directly to that IP address. It's made the connection now. And now you can still type in Google, but behind the scenes, your computer really knows the true IP address of how it can get back and forth to that Google server. Another thing that you'll see in your computer is a way that you can automatically have Windows, for instance, figure out all of its IP addresses and all of its DNS configurations automatically. And it does that through a, a protocol that's called DHCP. That stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. This was created because having to type in your IP address and your subnet mask and your gateway and your DNS, sure, that could be done manually. But instead of typing all of that in, why not have your computer ask the device out on the network, hey, can you just give me an IP address and a mask and a gateway? Can you give me all of that automatically so I don't have to type it in? And that's how DHCP really came about, so that it can automate that configuration process. Also with DHCP, 
You may have just a, a pool of addresses that could be assigned to you. When you come into the office one day, you'll have one address. You come in tomorrow, you might have a completely different address. But there may be certain servers on your network that you don't want to have to manually configure IP addresses for, but you'd like it to have the same IP address every time it starts up. And in those cases, you can tell your DHCP server, if that server right there ever asks for an IP address, always give it this particular static IP address. But everybody who else who's out there on the network who just needs an IP address for the day, you can give them a dynamic IP address from the pool of numbers that we have available to us. There's one special IP address you should also be aware of, and that's the loopback address. Inside of your computer, if TCP IP is operating, your computer knows a special address called 127.0.0.1, which is called a loopback address. It's the address for your internal IP configuration. So that's one good way to check to see if the internal IP setups inside of your computer are even operating properly is to ping that address, 127.0.0.1. If IP is up and running, that address will always be there for you. If you popped open a command prompt and you type ipconfig slash all, and I even piped mine to more so I could see everything coming through, you would see information about the adapter in your computer and more specifically, the IP version 4 address. So on my computer, 192.168.0.8 is my IP address. My subnet mask is 255.255.255.0, and my default gateway is 192.168.0.1. You'll also notice that my 0.1 device also acts as my DHCP server and my DNS server. And so it automatically assigned all of this information to me when I just turned on my computer and my adapter card said, can somebody out there that's a DHCP server please give me an automated set of addresses? And it did, and that's what I came up with. If you look at those numbers for IP addresses, they're 32 bits long, they're four bytes long, it's those four numbers. And you might think to yourself, there's only so many iterations of these that you can have. And if you thought that, you'd be absolutely correct. We can run out of addresses. If every device that could connect to the internet was using an open IP address that everybody else could see, then we'd quickly run out of numbers. To get around some of these limitations of addressing, we created or, or using something called NAT, Network Address Translation. And in everybody's home office and usually everybody's enterprise office as well, they're using something called source NAT, which is this NAT configuration that takes an IP address that's inside of your network, consolidates them all together, and on the internet side of things, everybody just sees one IP address. So I could have thousands of computers behind my router but really, the internet only knows me as one particular IP address. And that's pretty useful. You see this all the time in somebody's home office router. Your, my Netgear router that I have right here, this Netgear firewall, does natting for me. It allows me to have hundreds of devices in my house, but my internet service provider really only gave me one IP address. And it's this great little router device on my network that does that translation for me. It keeps track of who's where. If one station sends traffic out, it knows when the traffic comes back that it should go back to that original station again. So it's a pretty smart device. And it's keeping track of a lot of things happening at one time, all because we have to have that network address translation in place. The reverse case that's called destination natting means that there is an IP address public on the internet that somebody else would be communicating to, and it knows that if anybody talks to that particular address, then it needs to go to a particular server on the inside. So if this device out here, the 64.223.53.7, let's say that he wanted to talk to this machine, but it's behind a firewall. It has a local address. But we've been given an external address, and internal to our router, we've told our router, anytime anybody ever goes to 6621.14, just send them over to 192.168.3.22. This device here is only going to go to 6621.14. He doesn't even know that all of these things are happening behind the scenes with the address translation, and it's going through another switch, and it's really going to a server that's 192.168.3.22. All he knows is he's talking to 6621.14, and your local router handles that destination network address translation all behind the scenes. Let's review some of these things from our troubleshooting TCP IP settings module. How many octets are in an IPv4 address? Well, if you recall, there were 
four different bytes, and those four bytes could also be referred to as octets. Here's four, 192, 168, 0.1, your four octets all separated by that period in between. Which protocol is used to automatically assign TCP IP configuration information? This is handy. We don't have to manually put in IP addressing or subnet masking or gateways because we have a DHCP server, and that stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. And our last question, what is the TCP IP loopback address? This is a handy address to have to test your own machine, and that's 127.0.0.1. Well, that covers our requirements from the 2.2702 section 3.1, where we've looked at IP configuration settings, our DHCP. We've learned a little bit about NATing. We've also learned about our loopback addresses and automatic addressing as well. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free A-plus videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards or much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com. <laughs>